jasonnewland.com. My name is Jason Newland. This is Let Me Bore You to Sleep number 66. Now that's exciting. Oh, oh yeah. Um, only watch this video. This I'm actually streaming this live on Facebook. Um, only watch if you're watching it on Facebook or YouTube. Only watch if you can safely close your eyes. And if you're listening on iTunes or Spreaker or SoundCloud or Stitcher or TuneIn or wherever, uh, only listen when you can safely close your eyes. Uh, so straight away I've got a few people join me. I'm speaking quietly, I always do anyway, but it's 10 to 2 in the morning so I don't want to be making too much noise, plus it is a sleep session. Uh, Brondalyn says hi, hi, hello, oh that's a bit of a weird noise, <sighs> I make strange noises sometimes. Cassie Carter's here, hi Cassie, and uh, I've got my laptop flashing right in my eyes, I need to, not in my eyes, in my lenses, and uh, lovely Sebastian's here. And um, I need to get some anti-glare glasses. Will that stop people staring at me? I don't know. Or there's probably a way of... Um, bam, 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 bam. I'm sure there's a way... No system. I think there's a way to the display change brightness. That's it. So that's light. You can see in my in my eyes gone down. Oh, that's better. Excellent. Can't see anything on the screen now, but. So, as I said earlier, well, previous to this moment, only listen to this or watch this if you can safely close your eyes because I am going to bore you completely. And I'm going to bore you to start with by answering Brondelin's um, question what are my hobbies and interests so that's going to be the topic that's going to be today's topic and i'm going to bore you by telling you all about my hobbies and interests right from when i was a child so you've opened you've opened this little book of no return Brondelin. it's your fault <laughs> so i'll talk about my hobbies now about what I'm doing now and then I'll go backwards in time. I don't know why I'm so pleased with myself. Um, in a sense, and this did bug me, I think years, about probably two years ago. Uh, I've been doing this online stuff since 2006. So it's nearly 13 years and a couple of years ago um, my dad referred to what I do as a hobby and um, for me this is I'm devoting my life to doing this not necessarily these boring things but just generally the whole you know my my time and my energy is put into this uh, and so I don't really class this as a hobby but the interests 
and things that I enjoy doing, then I'm beginning to enjoy doing the live streams a bit more than I was. Um, there's been times in the past when I've done live streams and I didn't really enjoy doing them. I suppose it's because I felt that I was holding back a little bit, maybe editing myself at the same time as talking and it just didn't seem uh, just seemed quite a difficult thing to do but now I don't bother trying to edit myself because I don't want to say anything that's that needs editing anyway really I don't think so my interests I like helping people well I like the idea of helping people so um, I like to get feedback to source to, you know for me to see that uh, or to feel that what I'm doing is useful I like To be honest, this is kind of mainly what I do. Um, I'm quite a focused person. And I kind of, I wanna be, I'd like to be quite good at one thing, if I can, you know? Uh, I don't know, what, what are my interests? I like comedy, I like, I like music, um, so I'm not one of these people that's stuck in a decade with music. I've met a lot of people that, and also seen comments on Facebook where people say, oh, there hasn't been a decent mu you know, song written since 1973, or since 1989, or 1994, you know. For me, my era, the two eras for me really was the 80s and the 90s for music, because I was young, I was a, a child and then an, you know, a young adult during that period. But I like music from all eras. I like stuff from the 50s, 60s, 70s uh, to today, you know, I like lots of kind of music. But as far as buying albums goes, I, with the internet and everything sort of is streaming, uh, I haven't bought an album for a long time. Uh, Sebastian says, Jason was an avid fan of the Backstreet Boys and other 90s boy bands. He has a, a room devoted to them. No, I don't. I wouldn't call myself an avid fan of the Backstreet Boys, but I was a fan. Especially their song, what, Backstreet's Back, All Right, that one, where they all kind of dress as Halloween characters and, um, was it everybody? <laughs> also, New Kids on the Block. I remember, and it was the late 80s, I remember I had a job in 1989 and Backstreet Boys were like the biggest band in the world at that time and they were huge, obviously they're massive in America but they were huge here as well and they kind of overtook I suppose really they took over from Bros because before that Bros were the biggest band in this country, the biggest boy band, and then Backstreet Boys from America, not um, New Kids on the Block, kind of took that, and then after New Kids on the Block, in this country it was more 
take that and uh, E17 they were kind of the main boy bands in my country in the early 90s what other ones were there there was lots of others through the 90s five blue as well as the American ones NSYNC um, you know plus there's a girl bands not just boy bands there's girl bands as well um, so yeah Sebastian I don't have a room devoted to the Backstreet Boys I share that room between the Backstreet Boys and NSYNC so you know it's good to share so yeah I quite like different things what else do I like I like things that work I like I like it when things work and they come together and yesterday I decided I don't know even know why I did it but I decided to get all my equipment out all my recording equipment video stuff audio the microphones everything out into the living room uh, a couple of bookcases I brought out here so I could put the stuff on there and trying to get things organized and I couldn't get the I got this yeah I got this some of the stuff I couldn't get to work and um, then other stuff I you know I actually made a recording that was really good well I thought it was quite good uh, it was a I think it was a relaxation session it's for about 20 minutes and I just all the words just rolled off my tongue and it's a weird expression as words rolling off your tongue like, like falling out of your mouth onto the floor but at the end of it it wasn't recorded oh by the way please like this video if you like what I'm doing and like the I would say subscribe if you're on YouTube share make a comment uh, if you want for those that are watching live or the watching afterwards I decided to alternate between doing a live stream on YouTube and a live stream on Facebook I might do a live stream on Twitter However, I don't seem to, I don't get a lot of activity on Twitter. Most of my followers or the people that use my stuff seem to be uh, more Facebook orientated or Twitter or come to me from some other place. But Twitter never really kind of picked up for me and because I don't really I've not gone down the road of pictures like taking pictures of myself and in my bikini or whatever so I don't have I've not kind of built a following based on um, my chiseled good looks so I mean at the moment my biggest uh, following on my biggest uh, fan base at the moment seems to be through the podcasts on Spreaker and it's growing every day it's quite amazing it's with Spreaker it's a really good place to host your podcasts because you can host as many as you want you can share them onto lots of other podcasts directories and they also allow you to put your stuff onto uh, or to at least submit 
your podcast to Spotify, iTunes, iHeartRadio, Google Play, if you're able to. We can't do that in the UK, but, but in America you can add it to Google Play, I think. And it's just, the numbers are just going up and up. The downloads are increasing more and more every day. So I'm really pleased about that. So it's trying to keep track of where people, what podcasts people like. And one of the most popular podcasts I've got is the Deep Sleep Whisper Hypnosis. And that podcast is popular for some reason. People like it. So I've started to produce a bit more, more regular sessions. And the Let Me Bore You to Sleeps uh, seem to be quite popular. Was it Sleep Weekly? I did a uh, sleep weekly sessions like a seven day sleep session like a podcast that's quite popular anything to do with sleep I think it's uh, I'm just clearly just really boring I just bore people to sleep I'd like to be well, I kind of like be nice to be known for more than that. But you know what? Lack of sleep or having, um, I don't know why I'm saying this because people listening to this, a lot of people watching this or listening to this after this live stream or during won't need me to tell them anything about uh, sleeping issues, but sleeping is so important it's so important and I'm quite lucky in a sense of I can sleep pretty much any time of the day providing this you know there's not a lawnmower going on outside sometimes that can be a little bit even then I can sometimes get to sleep not that there'd be a lawnmower in the middle of the night, but you know, in the daytime. But I don't always get, I really get like a full eight hours sleep. Um, it's just, I think it's just the way that my, my brain is, you know, I don't know. It's, uh, I've more, more need like, regular naps rather than be sleeping for eight hours and then get up and be awake for 16 hours that's it's not really how I seem to work but I think one of the important things for me anyway is to give myself a break to not put too much pressure on myself because the one thing I've noticed this goes for, I think for it, lots of different things is you can't force sleep you can't force relaxation you know just like you can't force someone to like you you know it's those things don't work it doesn't forcing something doesn't doesn't work it's you just have to let it happen naturally if it's going to happen and in some ways it can work the other way. So if you try and force yourself to stay awake when you're in bed lying down, you think I'm gonna stay awake, I'm gonna stay awake. Actually it can work the opposite way and then you end up falling asleep. You know, it's, you try and keep your eyes open or if you stare, have a little staring contest with, I was gonna say a goat, with, a, with whoever and it's a contest about who whoever can go the longest without blinking which I don't think is particularly good for your eyes or your 
eyelids or the other person's eyes or their eyelids but it's, it's something like it's like the eyelids just get heavier when you you know the more you think oh, I'm going to keep them open I'm going to win that I'm going to win this prize I'm going to win that golden lollipop that's on you know that's up for grabs if I win this national prize this national competition if I can beat 700 people to get to the final and I can win that golden lollipop I can walk around with pride knowing that I held my eyes open so I think it's it's quite a good thing sometimes remembering that relaxing it can't be forced but it's very easy because relaxing really is just it's kind of like the if you think about mentally relaxing it's equivalent of just going from having a fist to just opening your hand but not opening it just letting it open naturally it doesn't take any effort it's the opposite it just or letting your hand just drop down to your leg it's kind of just the equivalent of gravity it's there you know if you've got a ping pong ball for whatever reason you might have one in your hand or wherever and you just let it go it's going to drop to the floor always and you might say yeah but JJ what if I'm in the space shuttle and I'm traveling around the, the world and I say yeah okay fair enough but the chances are you're not in the space shuttle and if you are in a space shuttle you shouldn't be listening to this because you should only listen to this when you can safely close your eyes and I like to think that if you're flying a space shuttle that you might need to uh, a little bit of awareness there and anyway what are you doing with a ping pong ball I imagine it'd be quite difficult to because they're so light does everything but but there's a difference not everything has the same gravity because zero gravity something that's heavier will be harder to move than something that's already really light I'm guessing so zero gravity which is why when the spacemen are walking on the moon they got really heavy boots which keep them on the floor otherwise everything would float up wouldn't it it's only the heavy things that stay on the floor maybe ah, that's interesting so yeah I should perhaps share this I wonder if I go and have a look go and have a look I'm going to go on Facebook and just see Let's have a little look. Have a look at look at myself. So according to this, so I'm just looking down. So Sebastian's here. Can you hear the sound of the computer? It's loud. It's very loud. So I'm wondering if I'm able to share this with, so this is number 66, can you believe it? Number 66, let me bore you to sleep, live Facebook stream, Jason Leland, 
the 19th of December 2018. So if I can share this, where can I share it? Share it to a page. So if I share it to my main page, maybe I'll get a, little, a few little vis a few little visitors. Just people on my page aren't little. I'm just just as an example. I think it's a shame. It's not a shame, but it'd be you know if you go onto YouTube, you can share your videos on Facebook, Twitter. Google Plus, what other ones? Um, Pinterest. But there's a few different places that you can share your video. If you make a video or if you do a live stream on Facebook, all you can do is share it to Facebook. So it's, I don't know, it's not really It'd be nice to be able to share it to, in a, in a way it'd be quite nice to be able to share it to YouTube. So I've just got another Alison, oh, Beth Marie. Hi Beth Marie. Ah. So we, you're from Bristol. So I'm just checking out your profile. It's so you're from Bristol. So yeah, I've never been to Bristol. Never been there. This is... Uh, so those that are watching now, if you ever watched any of my videos before, or is this the first time you've seen me, and you thought, oh, what's this bloke doing on this live stream on Facebook? Let's check him out. And now you're thinking, oh, why? Why? Why on earth? Beth Marie, Lydiard, Lydiard, Lydiard. Hi, and I love your videos. Thank you, and I love you too. I love your videos as well. I like your eyes. You've got really lovely eyes. Oh, It's nice to get a little bit of feedback. I don't, I don't always, don't get many people tell me what you know if they like what I do and what it is they like which videos they like and you know and I've done so many you know sometimes somebody will say something like oh I really liked uh, or they make a comment on a video that I've done but I don't know what they're referring to because I forget what I've said pretty much as soon as I've said it. And as soon as the video's finished, I, I don't really remember what I've talked about. I mean, this video, at the beginning, somebody, I was asked about what hobbies and what um, interests I have. Um, so I've not quite got around to really talking about hobbies and interests. I've talked a little bit. I'm interested in processes. Quite interested in the process of thinking and noticing patterns uh, kind of in behavior or in thinking or in verbal you know conversations things that people do things that people say you know 
So Beth says, is it Beth Marie or can I call you Beth? Uh, I was literally just listening to you try and stay awake challenge about 20 minutes ago. Oh, first time I've never fallen asleep. Brilliant, so I get to meet you after a failure. <laughs> it must have been why, probably just something was saying like, go watch him, watch him live. See how, see that he really is that boring. It's, uh, okay, so Beth, I struggle with two names. Not struggle, but I think uh, one name's enough. I'm gonna call myself Jason. What shall I call myself? I'll add another name. Sometimes people call me JJ. One person calls me JJ. Uncle JJ. It's not my niece. I um. If you're still there, because I can never really tell because the numbers go down and up as far as who's watching me live. When I recorded that um, try and stay awake challenge, I remember it quite well because I had the keys to this room that I was using so I used to be a counsellor. I was a working, self-employed. And I used to rent this room out that I could use to see clients. So, and it was just up the road from where I lived. So what I did is I went there probably 12 o'clock, one o'clock in the morning because I knew it would be it would be quiet because before that there was a pub that was just behind it so it'd be it wouldn't be quiet enough sometimes so what I did is I started going there and doing some recordings and I took my laptop which is where I played the music I had the video recorder uh, on a tripod I had myself um, I still can't remember what, what I was wearing on that day but that evening but you know there was, there was a wall behind I suppose there's always going to be something behind you isn't there eventually even if you're in a desert you know, a few hundred miles there's going to be something behind you a camel or something um, I was going to say camel eating a yoghurt well, that wouldn't make sense and I had the music playing and I just remember I don't know why I remember that time because I started to I thought I'm gonna start putting giving some good names I decided to sort of make some better quality sounding uh, videos which is it was quite a good quality that one and with the music uh, the pictures fairly good. I mean the lighting wasn't great in that boom um, But the cameras were a lot better these days, but you know back then uh, I bought a video camera Because the cameras on the phones weren't They're were okay, but not as good quality as an actual video camera Because I think 2011 is when I got my first iPhone Anyway, I recorded that video. It's, it lasts about 20 minutes. And I think I might have recorded some others at the same time. And I went through a period and I kept going back there and making these recordings. And I uploaded it and it was the first video. Bearing in mind I've been doing this since 2006. It's the first video that really um, I don't 
don't know what the right word is. I mean, it didn't, it just became more popular than all the other videos that I'd done. It just, you know, I think, yeah, I think on that channel I had nearly 100,000 views at that time on that video alone. Um, so it's very popular. It's always been the most popular video that I've ever had so far. Uh, and I've had quite a few different YouTube channels over the years. Uh, so yeah. And at those times when I have deleted the channel or the channel's gone for whatever reason, I actually have people email me or contact me on Facebook saying, where's the where's the video we need to you know, I listen to it every night to sleep and um, so I guess I have to take on that responsibility you know but I should say that you can everything that I do this is to whoever's listening including Beth or Beth Marie, or Beth Marie Lidyard, Lidyard, Lid, Lidyard, Beth. Um, everything that I do is available to download for free on my website, jasonnewland.com. Uh, I do realize that it is easier to just watch it on YouTube, to just, uh, you know, you save the link on your laptop or wherever and you just or on your phone and you just click on it and it just plays it streams the video it streams the music streams the podcast and it's just easier sometimes isn't it than uh, downloading stuff but everything is available uh, just to let you know and I'm always available to help out if you if you need uh, to know where stuff is. You know, if, if you go to my website, there's over 800 sessions on there, and there's probably about four, nearly 500 videos, and about 800 MP3s. So it's quite a lot of stuff, and I'm producing more and more lately for some reason um, I'm going back to 2011 Sebastian remember this because that's kind of the time that we started uh, communicating on YouTube and then on Facebook he used to be called the keyboard either the keyboard gay and guy the keyboard guy or the keyboard warrior or something like that the keyboard something and he'd like make music and I decided to try and inject some energy into the videos so not not by being all boisterous and doing handstands um, but just kind of by making the the videos look a bit better, having an intro, um, making some videos of music, and trying to promote them, giving them a maybe a catchy title or something like that. So I did a few like that. I did one was kick insomnia's ass. One was. Uh, Sleeping is your birthright. Uh, so that's they were quite popular. And but I've made a few. I think I made a few kind of uh, textbook errors along the way with some of the titles, which has been pointed out to me by some people online. Uh, Sebastian just reminded me he was called the keyboard dude because he was having a 
Yamaha keyboard and something else about a Freudian slip slit slip um, I forgotten what I was saying now I was talking about oh yeah some of the titles to my song my songs my uh, videos and my mp3s I tried to sort of make them so that they're memorable a little bit not so much maybe these days because this is number 66 let me bore you to sleep it's not very memorable really is it it's um, I guess if you listen to a particular uh, recording or watch a particular video and you like it and you think oh um, then all you got to do is just remember the number but sometimes I do think oh perhaps I should have like a title as well uh, you know for this it could be my interests but then it's such a long title and I started putting down the date on everything that I do in the title it might seem like a weird thing to do but I started to lose track of when I had made recordings and I really wanted to get things chronologically ordered but I couldn't because I, I kind of a lot of the stuff I can remember roughly what year it was some of it like the the little spurt of uh, videos that I made in 2011 um, pretty around the summer time uh, so I made those and they were especially because I was using the Kevin MacLeod music underneath the videos and so I can't remember that that time but I was also doing quite a bit of vlogging as well because I, I met someone online called Boston Chicky who introduced me to because I I used to do these um, updates where it was just like letting you know what I was up to you know I've I remember I did an update video in 2007 probably about November time uh, just saying well I've moved I've you know this is what I'm doing and the, you know I've got some new sessions on a podcast and a new podcast and, and then you know and then maybe in 2008 I'll be telling people that my podcast has been closed down because the company doesn't exist anymore because that happened you know I had a at the end of 2007 I had a podcast with lots of audios and I was I had over a hundred thousand downloads of that podcast and I had something like maybe 300 uh, audios maybe 200 something like that it was quite a few and then the podcast just for, without any notice because it was a free podcast it's free to upload and everything and, they, and I was getting like 6,000 uh, downloads a week or whatever I don't know uh, it was just you know it was really good and then suddenly I went on there and it was like maybe a hundred and ten recordings left and they deleted all of them most of them anyway and I hadn't gotten backed up so in reality I've done a lot more than 800 and then a little bit later on 
about a month later, they just deleted the whole channel, the whole website gone. I think it was called freepodcast.com or something. It's a really good podcast host. It was the first one I think I ever used. But I just, I, I didn't, the thing is, if they'd have charged, they said, oh, we want 10 pound a month or 20 pound a month. I would have happily paid it because of the service, because I was reaching such a wide, worldwide audience. But hey, I'll tell you another, one, another website I missed, it's MySpace. Because I started out on MySpace and my first video that I uploaded was a relaxation video. I think it lasted maybe 20 minutes and it was in black and white. And it's a, it was on a webcam, so, but it was black and white. And I don't know why I'm making hand movements for those of you that are listening. And there's absolutely no reason for me to make these hand movements. It's like I've got some kind of invisible puppet, but I don't. Um, I just heard Andre in the other room making some strange noises. So I I uploaded this video, and it's probably the first thing I ever uploaded to the internet. I had no idea that anybody else was doing it. I had no idea that um, I just didn't know what to think what was going to happen. And my space was all about music. It was all about rock bands and musicians. So I l uploaded this video and I was I was kind of a little bit nervous, a little bit, ooh, you know. And I just got so much positive feedback, so much support from people saying, oh, this is great, this is really nice. Uh, we could do some relaxation and people were sharing a video and just being really supportive of me as a person, as a as a creator, as an artist, whatever you, you want to call me, um, as a human. And I ended up getting, in quite a short time, about 10,000 views of that video. And like, I couldn't believe it. And this is before uh, this is 2006 YouTube if it did exist I didn't know about it so I think YouTube kind of arrived in 2007 but I, I didn't know I only found out about YouTube is because one of my people that lived in the house where I lived was raving about it so I thought oh I thought oh yeah I'll check that out and uh, at that time on YouTube you could upload limitless length of video and then shortly afterwards after a couple of months or a few months they limited it to 10 minutes I think something like that because I don't think their servers could handle the amount of uh, videos that were being uploaded. And they limited it to 15, then they uploaded it, yeah, 15 minutes. And they kept it at that for, for a while. And then they eventually allowed people to um, what I'm gonna do is Let me get 
get Andre. to grab him uh, from the floor he was he wanted me to pick him up but I had to do it one-handed <laughs> if you can see if you go like that with his, hand, with his foot he just grabs it he, he can't help it hey do you want to say hello Say hello to Beth. This is Andre. I wonder if he can see himself. <laughs> there he goes, look. Probably wants to get off now. Okay. He says hi back to everybody. He's, in all fairness, Andre is never more than about five seconds away from falling asleep. Can you imagine what it's like being with someone as boring as me as well? He's, I've had him since he was a baby. I think he was like five weeks old, four or five weeks old when I got him. And he could fit into my hand, he was tiny. And he's heard me talking, just me. And he had no choice. But I guess, that's all right, Beth, if you spell his name, is, I'm always, I mean, to be fair, I spell his name wrong because I just spell it A-N-D-R-E and it should have a, a thingy at the top of the E. So I, I don't even spell his name right. But that's okay, I don't mind. He's, he's never complained to me, to be fair. So I should spell it O-N dash D-R-A-Y. Well, Dr. Dre, his name's Andre, isn't it? I know they're very different people. Uh, by the way, this is a bit of useless information, but there's a TV program, like Beth, Beth will know what it is, but those those of you that don't live in sunny England perhaps might have heard of it. But it's called Country File, and Country File is on Sundays, uh, Sunday like early evening. And they've got a calendar, and um, basically they they got a load of pictures of wild animals and sort of st and they were going to put them onto the calendar and say which which picture do you want to be on the front of the calendar and the one that got voted the top was the picture of the polecats which are basically ferrets they're just wild ferrets and so that's quite cool 
I only found that out on Sunday while I was watching Country File. It was, um, my friend has also got one as well. He's got a polecat who's Andre's uncle. So I think Andre's probably, probably maybe a third polecat. Or maybe half polecat. But with polecats, they're very dark. Very dark skin, dark noses. They're, um, and ferrets are a lot lighter. But he's, he's quite dark. I think he's like a silverback or something. Um, but you know, you see the the albino ferrets that are like pure white, got itchy nose, and he's decided to. He's got a bowl of food just over there. Just point my finger. A bowl of dry food. He's eating his wet food, so he's got a bowl of dry food, which are basically ferret pellets, and they've, they're good for his teeth, clean his teeth, and they've just got full of vitamins and stuff. He doesn't go to the bowl. He goes to a place where he's hidden exactly the same dry food, but he's hidden it under something. I mean, this must be like a quarter squirrel, I reckon. I wonder how long I've been talking on here for. How long has me been here? Oh, Sebastian, just going back, Sebastian mentioned that he was one of the first um, was it like musical tutors or do doing tutorials for uh, playing the keyboard oh going back that reminds me some of the titles of the recordings that I did which have been a bit um, unfortunate and I can honestly say at the time I didn't even think about this uh, was one that comes to mind was real Andre's going to make lots of noise now. I can always tell when he's going to be misbehaving. He's been asleep for ages and suddenly he's come alive and he's wide awake and he wants to just cause mayhem. me I'm trying to do a nice calm quiet relaxing sleepy session and I've got this ferret playing around with a carrier bag I mean part of the reason I do my sessions so late at night is so that it's quiet. I haven't got anyone outside um, in the garden, or I've got you know just activity. There's less activity during the night, unless you live with a ferret called Andre. I'm going to call him Audrey. It's quite weird actually thinking about it because. 
Andre is named after a friend of mine called Andre. But he had a sister called Audrey. I'll let you see what he's up to. see that It's just, I had to tidy up and I put a lot of his toys into that green container and now he wants to get some of his toys out to play. He's determined to get in there. The weird thing is, normally he never wants to go inside there. Doesn't normally bother with it. But because there's stuff in there, right, there we go. about the excess sound. I suppose I should bring this to an end before he starts playing the trumpet or something. Um, so yeah, I had this session and I called it relax completely using your hand. Relax completely using your hand. So the session was basically focusing on your hand, opening your hand, um, closing your hand, opening your hand, and basically relaxing your hand, which then leads to the rest, like connecting that to your mind and your, your mind relaxing. And that's what it was about. But he's gonna, he's, I'm gonna end this. this is <laughs> he's now under the chair. hiding somewhere. There he is. You probably run out the back and then jump up onto the chair, start knocking everything off of the little table. Oh yes, he's, he's run out of the back. So I'm gonna... He 
he's walked out now. You know, as soon as I stop recording, it will just probably lay down and go to sleep. It's just because I'm doing this that he, he just needs to do what he's doing, which is, oh, so Beth, you love him, you can come and get him, you can have him, he's, <laughs> he's quiet most of the time, but when he's awake, I really thought he was going to start scratching, because that, that brown thing that he was on, that's near his cage, is, it's actually a cat scratcher and I thought he was going to start scratching at it and when he starts it's, I have to put him in his cage because it's too much you know but now I'm starting to get more people watching I'm about to bring this to an end so you can watch this again if you want he's now in the kitchen opening the kitchen cupboards I'll take you into the kitchen. Hi Andy. Andy's joined. Oh no, he's, he's not in the kitchen. This is the amount of cable I've got from a microphone there, wherever it is, to the phone, which is just here. This is how much wire I have so Beth I could actually you could hold the phone in Bristol and I could still be here in Colchester and talk to you it's so long look it's about 10 miles long So he's back inside the room, back inside his carrier bag. So I'm gonna go. Uh, I'm. <laughs> this hasn't really happened when I've been live before. If it was recorded, pre-recorded, I could edit out him, but I can't do that on a live session. So I'm gonna go. I'll probably be live on YouTube tomorrow and then I'll be back here the, probably the night after. Uh, you can contact me if you want to message me on Facebook, please do. And uh, my website is jasonnewland.com. My YouTube channel is just go to YouTube and just put my name in there Jason Newland Hypnosis. this little fella he's been drinking because it all it's all wet around it so he's 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 got this little um, blue thing over there that's full of water so he likes to dip his little beard into it so Andre wants to say hello to Boston Chicky. He wants to say, well, he said goodbye to everyone. So say goodbye to Sebastian. Say goodbye to Beth. Say goodbye to Andy. And say goodbye to everybody else that's been watching. And say sorry. Oops, sorry, I nearly dropped him. Say sorry to everyone for making all that noise. Yay? all that sound I should say sound
there you go. I'll give him a little bit of a bye, Beth and Andy. You're right. He doesn't. He doesn't care, does he? Do you remember when he was tiny? go now and you will take care of yourselves I will very likely be live on YouTube tomorrow or today you know later on I'm gonna try and do alternate uh, Facebook live stream and then YouTube live stream But I'll share on Facebook and YouTube anyway. Ooh. Okay, bye everyone.